Okay, let's, let's go ahead and get started. Let's get this started. Ten is released to leave about ten thirty-five. So let's uh, let's get going. Thanks for being here. Um, I wanted to make a church-wide announcement and a, a Sunday school announcement. As Burke pointed out, this is not a social security party. We're going to try. We're going to try, try for April twentieth. We're going to the lake when it's too hot. We all burned up. Um, at least the ones under the fish. Everybody in the house is fine. But at any rate, we'll um, we're going to try that. But let's go through our announcements. You'll see preparing for worship from Ariel and talk about the retreat that the staff had this weekend. I think you'll enjoy reading that. Um, let's see here. Uh, RSVP for the Ramadan dinner, which is on March 21st. Care team session info is today. You'll see that on page 8. Uh, giving to the Unified Budget and where we stand is also on page 8. Puerto Rico trip and pictures are there on page 9. So take a look at that uh, that Monica wrote. Doing the work of Lent uh, is on page uh, 10. Road Resurrection is coming up on March 24th. And I know a bunch of you are involved in that. Susie, are you still involved in that one as well? Yeah, I thought so. Okay. Um, You'll see those on page 10 and 11. Uh, the request uh, from, from the History Committee on page 12, you'll see at the bottom of page 12, an adventure is going to Fort Worth on Thursday, the 21st of March. Uh, total Eclipse party on the lawn on April 8th. Bring your glasses. Um, that should be fun. Um, and Gina Oregon, our Deacon Chair-elect, is our IMO sir for this week. So we're really happy to see that for Gina. She's a neat lady. Okay, summer activities are on page 16. Are there any other church-wide announcements that we need to talk about? No Wednesday activities this week. That's right. Okay. Very good. No right. lunch, no dinner. Okay, so thanks for that. Spring break. And, um, yes, for spring break on that one. I know um, we, we have uh, Pat Cullum out teaching today. I don't know if we're missing anybody else teaching, but that's, uh, I appreciate the people who do that. She's teaching who's whoever will the last couple of weeks. I'm going to pass the prayer book around, and... Uh, We'll go from there. And Timothy, thank you so much for doing this. Oh, thank y'all for having me. Uh, we're here. There we go. It's been a while since we talked. Last can't even open the door. I close the door. All right. Uh, how many of us? Actually, let's start in prayer. <laughs> God of grace, love, God of all things, thank you. Thank you for the ways in which we can come together and share and learn and question and even wonder uh, about the text that is before us. Lord, as we each are in this room, we each hold different joys and different sorrows <coughs> within our lives. And so, Lord, may you be with us in all things. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. How many of us are familiar with the Dinah story? <laughs> Well, I've read the story. Read. So most of us have read the story, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it okay if I erase this? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Most of us are familiar. So I'm going to do a little thing here. Spell, so if any of those are wrong, y'all just tell me. Uh, how many in here would say that Dinah was raped? One, two, three. According to the point. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We'll go with twenty. Not raped. Must be the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> you being different, we'll, we'll put that. So no one. Okay. How many of us find that the killing that Simeon and Levi does is honorable for that they go and kill? For our day or their day? We'll, we'll go with their day. Okay. Honorable for their day. Honorable for their day. Two. It's not the same thing as 
Honorable is not always the same thing as uh, uh, good ethics. Good exactly. That's what Churchill said. That's right. Sometimes you, it lines up. Yes, the, the definition of biblical justice and the way we see justice are two totally different things, right? So we'll just put two. And, and again, I'm not holding y'all to this, just so you know. <laughs> How many of us look at it as an offense that they killed Shepard? I just think that the punishment was really severe for the crime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, it, it was. To wipe out a whole nation, you know, it was. Yeah, so I, 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 we'll go about three over here. All right. So today, I'm not going to be able to answer any of this. Um, what I'm going to do is for us to look at it in a very different way. Um, of how we understand the story of Dinah. How we also understand the family aspects and the family relationships um, that happen in this story that moves us into the ending. Now, uh, with that, you will probably soon read about another story. What's another story that mimics almost exactly to the T of the story of Dinah? Tamar. Tamar. Which Tamar? Second Tamar. Second Tamar. There we go. So, we have Tamar, we have Dinah. We're going to learn all about her. Uh, and then we also have Tamar. And I promise we're going to read the text. So. Um, Tamar is the daughter of David, Jacob, the only daughter of Jacob that we know from the wife of Leah, who Leah, Leah, or Leah, however you want to put it, um, was the one having all the many children, and it was Rebecca that felt uh, that why in the world was she not having any children at all, and uh, and then we then get children from Rebecca. Uh, but Leah was also uh, the wife that was taken. And we look at it in that way, taken or thrown off to Jacob because he really wanted Rebecca. Right? It's a sad story of women uh, throughout the Jacob narrative. He didn't get what he wanted, but he decided to go ahead and take Leah because in the hope with that, years after he would get Rebecca. We have David with Tamar in the same way, and I promise I'm going to teach this and somebody else is going to. Um, with the whole narrative between rape, uh, and then two of David's children, sons, then go in an honorable way, and, and the text uses that word, um, and kills the transgressors of that, uh, that rape Tamar. Now the difference is, Depending on your translation, the word rape is basically used here in Hebrew. It's not used here in Hebrew. So the question becomes, what is the punishment? I'm not punishment. What is the crime? And also, the punishment that goes along with it, does the punishment match the crime? Uh, the reason why we, we use that is that we'll see in one of these narratives closer to the end, the root word for rape, I believe, is S-H something in there for Hebrew. Uh, it is not used here. The root word that is used here is shame. So we're going to pop, piggyback on some of these things as we read the text of 34. So I'm going to just skip straight to 34. Chapter 30 tells us just that Leah was born, a Leah born a, a child known as Dinah, the only daughter uh, that we see, and then we jump to 34. Now Dinah, the daughter of Leah, whom she had born to Jacob, went out to visit the women of the region. And when Shechem, son of Hamer, the Hivite, prince of the region, saw her, he seized her and lay with her by force. His soul was drawn to Dinah, a daughter of Jacob, and he loved the girl and spoke tenderly to her. 
So Shechem spoke to his father Hamer, saying, Get me this girl to be my wife. Now Jacob heard that Shechem had defiled his daughter Dinah, and he, but his sons, were with his cattle in the field. So Jacob held his peace until they came. And Hamer, the father of Shechem, went out to Jacob to speak with him, just as the sons of Jacob came in from the field. And when they heard of it, the men were indignant and very angry because he had committed an outrage in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter, for such a thing ought not to be done. But Hamer spoke with them, saying, The heart of my son Shechem longs for your daughter. Please give her to him marriage. Make marriage with us. Give your daughters to us and take our daughters for yourselves. And you shall live with us and the land shall be open to you. Live and trade it and get the property in it. And Shechem also said to her father and to her brothers, Let me find favor with you and whatever you say to me I will give. Put the marriage present and gift as high as you like. And I will give whatever you ask. Only give me the girl to be my wife. And then the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and his fathers, Hamar, deceitfully. Because they had defiled the sister of <coughs> God. And when they said to them, we cannot do this thing to give our sister to the one who is uncircumcised, for that would be a disgrace to us. Only on this condition will we consent to you, that you will become as we are, and every male among you be circumcised. Then we will give our daughters to you, and we will take your daughters from ourselves, and we will live among you and become one people. But if you will not listen to us and be circumcised, then we will take our daughter and be gone. The words please Hamer. And Hamer's son Shechem and the young men did not delay to do this thing. Because he was delighted with Jacob's daughter, he was the most honored of his family. So Hamar and his son Shechem came to the gate of their city and spoke to the men of all their city, saying, These people are friendly with us. Let them live in the land and trade in it. For the land is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters in marriage, and let us give them our daughters. Only on this condition will they agree to live among us, to become one people, that every male among us be circumcised as they are circumcised. And will not their livestock, their property, and their animals be ours? Only let us agree with them, and they will live among us. And all who went out of the city gate heeded Hamar and his son Shechem, and every male was circumcised, all who went out to the gate. Let's pause right there. Um, if you attend Wednesday night Bible study, you know most of whatever I write on the board is for myself and not for you. <laughs> Just so you, you know, for me to keep track of where I'm going. Um, what do you see? What do you hear? What do you notice? Just in this part, not the rest. It's almost like a treaty between mm -hmm. uh, peoples, and when I say peoples, I mean the men that are um, negotiating this and, and then presenting it to their own. Uh, in, the, um, in the instance of Shechem and his people, right. basically saying, "Hey, I'm negotiating with uh, you know the Hebrews." And, Here's what we've come to. It's yes. a great idea. You should, you got, you all, all you guys should go for this. Yes, the leader has said it. Everyone should do this. It's a treaty, and part of this treaty. So uh, there's some back and forth in this. The region is also known as Shechem that they are in, even though it is of the Hivites. Um, and so, remembering, I can't think of the exact name uh, word. Uh, but names mean something when it is identifying as the city or the place itself. Uh, so this story 
being in the region of Shechem, telling a story about Shechem. Um, and then we have a treaty between Shechem and the Israelites. And what this treaty basically does is to say that you uh, are now Israelites. You are now part of us, and you are part of this whole nation that has been outlined as God's people if you circumcise. So they do this. They have a treaty. They do become circumcised. They do allow them to come back in. What else do we see? Well, to this point, so far so good. Yeah, so far so good, right. <laughs> right. We're, we're in a good place. Mm -hmm. um, we have decided uh, that we're what the punishment is or what we will do now to work together that Shechem and Dinah have gone to bed together. Um, now what that looks like is that we're in cahoots with each other. Lord. We don't know how Dinah <coughs> feels. We're just making that do. You know what? She didn't have a voice. <laughs> she what? She said she'd been sitting by me too long. <laughs> she'd been what? <laughs> sitting by me too long. Yeah. The same questions. Yeah. That is. Let me find. That's the biggest problem of most texts in the Bible. Uh, but especially this. No one's asked Dinah how she feels. No one allows Dinah to speak about what she feels. Uh, one uh, theologian, Sternberg, talks about uh, the only thing that we know of any type of emotion maybe is that Shechem speaks tenderly to Dinah. But the theologian, what I love is there have been multiple women who have heard sweet nothings before. Yeah. <laughs> I love the way that she put that. Uh, nowhere do we hear in the text about what happened. The difference is between Dinah and Tamar. We get a little bit of what Tamar feels. We know what happens there because she runs and tells her brother. It's her voice telling what is actually happening here. We only know in a way of hearsay. It is that Jacob and Levi and Simeon already know what have happened, that they have, how, how the words used, that, uh, that Jacob uh, knows that they have gone to bed. This says now Jacob heard that Shechem had defiled his daughter Dinah. Thank you. In, in the fifth, uh, fifth verse. Heard, right? That heard about, right? It's all of this hearsay in, in this, but no words from Dinah. What else? Well, it seems like Shechem loved her as opposed to, in Tamar's case, you know, that was a very different reaction. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, at least it seemed like he was fighting for her as opposed to walking away. Right. His might not actually have been sweet nothings from his perspective, but that, you know, that however sincere he may have been, that doesn't mean that she, you know. Consented. Yeah, exactly. 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 And, yeah. and it's silent there, unfortunately, for us. I mean, the, the, the question, and I keep going back and forth to Tamar and David, because um, we hear in the Old Testament, I'm sorry, I never used the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, uh, that the sins of our fathers will pass down to our children. <clears throat> David kills the husband, Uriah, because he's in love with Bathsheba, right? Uh, and it says that I'm in love, right? We don't know exactly what those that love looks like. David also goes out and ravages women and all this, and then we hear the story of Tamar. Right? Jacob has done all of these same things, and then we hear the story of Dinah. Um, it's almost as if this treaty is to make the incident honorable. Yeah. One, I have not, 100%. How do we make this an honorable act instead of what it looks like, whether it is shame, whether it is rape, 
whether it's crying, but whatever it may be, how do we make this look like something different, honorable, up against men, right? Because we don't get the words of the women. Please. So I have a, oh, I'm wondering, yes. in, a, in a modern context, is the situation now where, you know, this is probably very controversial what I'm about to say, but it just, your, the comment made me think, where we are not allowing choice, mm -hmm. is that an effort by certain people to make these things honorable now? And but making the decisions for individuals right. without their voice. Without their voice, mm -hmm. as what happened to Dinah. Yeah. You know, possibly Jacob spoke to her to get her feelings and her ideas about this before they went through all of this political you know, and mm. so my only yeah. pushback to that, okay, is Jacob is in a different nation at the time. Oh, well, okay. and he comes back. So that's where thirty-three. We probably should have read thirty-three. <laughs> no, I, no iPhones. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I know. email. I was about to say email. Okay. Yeah. No pigeons. You know, the carrier <laughs> pigeons have probably not. <laughs> but what my my assumption is, mm -hmm. is that Jacob hears it from Simeon and Levi mm -hmm. of what has happened. That, that's my assumption in, in there. In, in some of the way that maybe Dinah or that uh, the word has traveled around. So here is where this next piece comes in. Susie, you got something? Oh, yeah, someone was about to say something. Susie. Well, I was just going to ask, and this may be coming from not reading enough, but how is it that just circumcising the men of Shechem makes that big of a difference is that do they automatically believe all the same things, the same God, or, you know, why that particular thing is the thing that's going to bring them together? Yes, so, <clears throat> I think this is just weird about the Bible and the whole Jewish and Christian understanding, I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, this is one of the first acts that is asked of Abraham, is that to be circumcised so that he is different from all the other men all the other people before him. Um, and when we <coughs> jump to the book of Acts, the only way that, Christ, that Gentiles can be Christians is yeah. circumcision. It's not that they have to believe the same thing. It's not that they believe Jesus Christ is resurrected from the dead. We don't get that until Paul talks about that in Philippians. The thing that Peter agrees to with Paul to allow... Gentiles is circumcision. And the story is, is that it is so that they can say that they are different from the way they were before and of a now a new nation. And then that also separates the men from the women because yep. the men do this and so they're, mm -hmm. but the women don't have anything to say about that. Right. It's more and more the treaties again between now, the problem with this is that when we look in the book of Acts, the ones who started all the new churches are yeah. women. Women. Yeah. Women. If you, the first church in Acts is started by three women and the Holy Spirit. Hmm. But yet, it's always a decision between Paul and Silas and others of, who will, of what the decisions are. Um, but even the craziest story I think in the Bible is, is not the craziest, that's Judges 20. Uh, uh, <laughs> the craziest story, uh, story in the Bible, one of the craziest stories in the Bible is right after the burning bush. Moses, uh, God says, Moses, I want you to go free my people. Go out there. And Moses is running out to Egypt to go do the things he's supposed to. And then God says, I hate you, Moses. I am now going to kill you. And it's Moses' wife that is the only one that understands because Moses is saying, why are you about to murder me? And it's his wife that says, oh, you're uncircumcised. And so she takes out a knife, circumcised, and God says, it's all good. We're happy now. We're best friends. We're, we're good. Right? It, it, circumcision has a huge place, not just in the Hebrew Bible, which most people think. It's throughout the entire narrative. And it's just to say, 
we're different from other nations. Um, let's read the next part. Verse 25. On the third day, when they were still in pain, two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, took their swords and came against the city unaware and killed all the males. They killed Hamer and his son Shechem with the sword and took Dinah out of Shechem's house and went away. And the other sons of Jacob came upon the slain and plundered the city because the sister had been defiled. And they took their flocks and their herds and their donkeys and whatever was in the city and in the field, all their wealth and all their little ones and their wives, all what was in the house, they captured and made their prey. Then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, you have brought trouble on me by making Odious into the inhabitants of the land and the Canaanites and the Pezzarites. My numbers are few, and if they gather themselves against me, at me, attack me, I shall be destroyed, both I and my household. But they said, Should our sister be treated like a whore? Seems like a present day people went wrong. Uh, we were gonna the revenge deal, and it stays for generations. Mm. Terrible score settling. You know, it makes it rational. They thought they were justified, you mm. know, taken up for their sister. Yeah. What, what's going on in Gaza now? So it's funny you just say that. So my, this is my, uh, many of you know my minor was in uh, women's studies in the Bible, feminist ethics. Great book if you ever want a uh, Hebrew Bible of all the women uh, pieces. Helpmates, Harlots, and Heroes by uh, <clears throat> Alice uh, uh, Bellis. Um, and one states, In this thought-provoking study of Dinah, it assures a native of Israel draws parallels between the story of Dinah and the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Levi and Simeon are like the modern Israelis who will use any excuse to annihilate the Palestinians. And Dinah is like the Israeli doves, mostly women, who would like to talk with the Palestinians, the people of the land. And like Dinah, they are quickly silenced. Shear seeks to make a connection between the past and the present. What's funny is this book was written in 1993. What a revenge for generations, right? We're still talking about a, an understanding. <clears throat> what else stands out for this? I only noticed that Jacob is upset because now he has trouble on his hands. What else is Jacob it, it, upset about in this story, though? Oh, go ahead. I cut you off. I'm sorry. He doesn't, we don't see his, his anger at what happened to his daughter. It says he, he heard about it. But he doesn't. Hear it. But he doesn't really say anything about it. So we know that Jacob, in these texts before, is on the run still from Esau. He's still afraid that Esau is going to kill him. So he is in a whole psychological different place than everybody else. Because the next chapter is that he is running to Bethel because he's <coughs> now supposed to meet Esau, who is part of the other bites uh, that he is saying, 
could all counter around him and take over him. So he already has one strike against him with Esau. And now this is strike two because of this. So all of the Hittites, the Pezzarites, the Shechemites, all of these are coming against him and his community is small. How is he going to take over all of them? And look what you've done now, Simeon and Levi. There are more people that are now trying to kill me. It's all about me. It is all about <laughs> Jacob's story as heel grabber. It, no, that's not heel grabber. Yes, it is. Yeah. Jacob and Esau, heel grabber. It's all about me. There's a part in this story that stands out, though, for me at least. Part. There's reasons why this word is used. Uh, and we, even when we translate to Hebrew, that is the exact word that's used, harlot. Uh, and so when we understand a harlot as a sex worker, now what we might need to notice too uh, is that in the Hebrew Bible, sex workers, that is a legal field, of work, uh, but that is also to say that most, not most, all, uh, do not get the chance to be married once they enter into that field. Um, and so many times it is um, uh, widows um, or individuals who have been raped before throughout time. Um, and so that prognosis had been defined for the rest of their life that they could now not be married. Um, or it is that they had sex outside of, before being married. So the term harlot is a huge term that doesn't just mean one thing. It can be, it has historical ramifications around it. And so Simeon and Levi ask the question, shall my sister be looked at? as a heart. This, is, this line is what gives most theologians the question, is it that Dinah was raped? Or is it that Dinah had sex before marriage and so there was shame? And so in order to cure the shame, they created a treaty? We don't know because of the term harlot means so many different things. Now, because time, we don't have a lot of time left, I'll give you my piece. Or, I don't, usually I don't say that, but I think it's right. In my piece of why I feel it's right, uh, one is because we, we don't get to hear from Dinah in this. She's silent very much through this. The anger is so built up that for other times that we see in the Bible, when someone uh, or a female that may have a sex before marrying someone, there is this quiet way of marrying them off to someone. And it's not a huge treaty made among the entire nations of what something so. So this is a built piece. Now, this could be also because this is the, one of the first times we see this in the text, right? Remember, we're a new nation. All things that are happening is new, even if it happened in Sodom and Gomorrah, even if it happened in all these other places, it hadn't happened here yet, right? Um, and so for Levi and Simeon to go and to kill off all of these people, there had to be more in my mind going on than just this shame in their mind of um, sex before marriage. That they take her from the home um, that she had been told to go to. They're rescuing her in this type of way of all that's happening. And when you get to Tamar, you're going to realize it's a little bit of a different story in that regard uh, of what that looks like. Uh, Dinah's story is very different than the other stories of the Bible. And then when you get to Judges 20, um, it's a totally different story there, too. 
of the, the differences of how these rape narratives happen throughout the Hebrew Bible are fascinating. Um, did I pick this story? Why did I pick such a difficult story? <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably next time we'll do something happy. Uh, I think you, I think you picked Tamar as well. I, I think. So. <laughs> Maybe I was thinking of the other Tamar. It's not a other happy story. Uh, I think it's interesting that there's not a male equivalent, you know, for the for Harlot. Yep. For him. For, the for closest him. one is the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, mm -hmm. uh, when uh, the angels mm -hmm. who are men. Mm -hmm are at the fountain and the people say let us go and take the flesh of him uh, for ourselves. It doesn't mean kill. <laughs> it does not mean kill at all. Uh, that's the closest hmm. narrative we get to something like no, that. But I mean to have a word. Oh! Or harlot, harlot or, or right. whatever. You know, we, 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 we don't have that equivalent for men because it's the men writing the story, right? So, so fun fact. Um, my Greek is awful. I'm better at Hebrew. Uh, and I'm not that great at Hebrew. Uh, um, the, the, the piece in Corinthians where people have uh, uh, identified as homosexuality actually means uh, male sex workers hmm. uh, in that uh, when translated uh, in the Greek. Um, that's the only time that we see that too. It's in that one place. But no, we don't have a harlot. We don't have anything like those or even examples of those in the text. Um, what else? What stands out? What, anything else in our last five minutes? The only thing that caught my attention, I'm not really had any deal with, with the sister, but you know, two guys go out and, you know, murder all the males. In the nation, but you know, not the nation. I don't think. How could they do that? But at least all of them that are in the city, right? Or just a little village has been translated as a because it makes it look like a major killing. How can two guys make a major killing? Well, they said they're still in pain from circumcision. Now I don't know what that's like because well, it was I was a baby, but yeah. I don't I don't know. About that. <laughs> yeah, it, it just seems like. Man, there's no way two guys could do that. I thought if the whole, all the brothers went at one time, but just the two of them went and killed everybody, and then the other brothers. Well, on 27, it says the other sons of Jacob's came upon the slain. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they just plundered the city. They plundered the city. They just took all the things. But here's the other piece to it. If the treaty make, says that they are one of ours, yeah. they just killed their own. Mm -hmm. So it, it is now a greater sin because they've killed their own people. But they never intended, I mean, it's more, where it said somewhere they had a plan, they were deceitful, they, they never intended to. They, yeah, Simeon and, and Levi. Levi. Yeah. Yeah. But here's the other thing about Jewish, that's not the correct term, but the, the, the his understanding of Hebrew, um, it has to be the patriarch to make the deal. So even though it's not in the eyes of Levi and Simeon, it still is the eyes of Jacob, who's the patriarch, and Hamar, who's the patriarch of that. And that's it's kind of like how we, you know, you got to have presidents or kings or whatever sign the treaty. It's the patriarchs that sign that. Um, and so this is another piece of why Jacob is so mad, because he's made this deal. Um, and now the word's going to spread that I've made a deal with them and now I've killed them. But no one's going to think that it was Simeon and Levi. They're going to think it was me, because I'm the patriarch. This. Again, Jacob is thinking about himself. But in that part, I guess he's a little right. Uh, <laughs> yes, Lord. May I ask you about a word that's used? Yes. I might have to get back to you, because I didn't hear my lexicon. <laughs> but I would, yes. I've, in verse 29, the word pray mm. And I find that interesting. It says all their wealth, all their little ones and their lives, and their wives, all that was in the houses, they captured and made their prey. Yeah. 
So I can tell you what that one is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, meaning that made their property. Okay. So the women, the children, the ox, the donkeys, and even the actual things. Okay. Plunder. Plunder. Is it on 29? It is, so usually it says that they plundered all of, but George said it made their plunder. So it's taking as plunder. Plunder, plunder yeah. Houses. Yeah, so as their own, as their stake, uh, as their property would be how that would usually translate. Um, I'm trying to think of what the root word would be in that. I'm going to get it wrong. Uh, I was going to okay. do it, but, but yeah, it is, it is to take as property. Okay. Now the other fun fact about this too, and I can't remember exactly if this is Tamar or if this is in Judges. Um, this also means they usually take their gods. So remember, it's not until closer to the end of the Hebrew Bible when they stop acknowledging that they have other gods that they take. And so these are so when they go and plunder cities, they also take all the property, but they also take their gods with them. Somewhere that are idols. The, I think I remember. I remember short. But somewhere doesn't God say, I'm the only God. I think he says, there's no other gods before me. Before me. He's the first one. First one. They all have their gods among them still. Yeah. So the thing about J, uh, the, the, when you're reading the David narrative, notice whenever he picks up, he says he took his things and his gods and his idols with him and went on to the next place. So it is the story of the people also accepting Yahweh uh, in this too. So part of prey, part of the plunder, part of the things that they have is still uh, these idols and gods that they take along with them. So they're still <clears throat> getting to know Yahweh. Right. Well, as one of my dear professors put it, this is a, uh, this is a new parent with new children trying to figure it out. And there is this evolving relationship between the two as they're trying to get to know how to trust, how to work, how to play, how to live, all together. And finally, we think they got it, and then they don't. I heard somebody talking about that, bringing it up to today's standard. And we don't go out and carve our own gods or make them out of steel. But we have our own gods oh. that we worship. Oh my goodness! That we put before our own god, and I think that's where he got right, yeah. really mad at us. We we do it real quick. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. we do. We yeah. have it. I think. I mean, that's the truth. Yeah. The, the we we have our own. It just looks a little different. We just give it a different name, right? Right. right. Yeah. So what? One final question, maybe final. Question. Yeah, oh yeah. Why yeah. don't you use the term Old Testament? Oh, yeah. because it's not old. Um, and, yeah. and most seminary professors will tell you that they would not allow, we were not allowed to use Old Testament. We had to use Hebrew Bible. Because to say Old Testament is disrespecting um, a, a text used by still people who honor it and love it, and that to say it's old and this is new, it's, it's not because Jesus was a Jew. And nice. Jesus' story is still the Hebrew Bible. We've just added on to it. That is awesome. So yeah. I always try to say Hebrew Bible, and sometimes I, I slip. When I, when I go home and then I come back because I've listened to my mom and dad so much, I, I'm like, oh, no, it's Hebrew Bible. We've got to work on this. We you know, get mm -hmm. slipped into those things. But, yeah, there's. thank you all for letting me be with you all. Uh, next time, I promise I'll pick a happy story. Uh, <laughs> I'll let Dennis take on the hard ones. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. No problem. Uh, and then, Laura, if I'm going to go look at my lexicon, I'm pretty sure that's what pray means, but if I'm wrong, I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go through the prayer requests. We have uh, Mary Kay Catherine Tucker is on spring break with her family at, at uh, Grand Canyon. Um, and she said she was sorry to miss Timothy's lesson, but she'll see it on the recording. Uh, pray for the family of Roger Painter, uh, former pastor of First Baptist Austin. This must be you, Susie. Is this, is it? Yes. And he's, he's the husband of Susie Painter, Painter, Susie Painter March, who was with CBF. Right. She went to Laura, went to school with her. 
Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. 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 He passed away last Wednesday. Yeah. No. He had had a stroke in the fall that was pretty severe, and he was really bound and determined to come back from it and uh, be able to walk and take care of himself. One side was pretty um, debilitating. And um, they had moved him around to various places trying to continue this therapy and so forth because insurance was, you know, not cooperating. His daughter, Mary Catherine, was really working on all of that. And um, I didn't know until yesterday, I guess, what caused his death. I didn't know if he had another stroke or whatever, but he had a heart attack. Mm -hmm. oh, so, But he had a bad heart as well. And um, he was 74, and wow. he passed away on Wednesday. So just remember good. that family. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you for that. All right, uh, Diana is asking for prayer again for her brother-in-law Edwin uh, Watkins, who had complications on his cataract surgery. So the lens flipped in his eye because he's really, really nearsighted, so it didn't stay in place. So instead of getting a second one done tomorrow, they're going in. They can apparently put a ring in to stabilize it, so it doesn't flip anymore. But his vision was worse. After the surgery than it was before, oh, oh, and so and this is the same eye that he had the detached retina in. Oh, well. So y'all just pray that this yes, works because uh, he wants to get back to play golf, and you can imagine how hard that is with one eye. Oh, <laughs> Among yeah. all the other things that you need two eyes for. Oh, well. so, yeah. And Patty and David, you guys both had yeah. good results this week. Good. Yeah. Must be cataract season. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else that we need to pray for before we go? Yes, bro. Uh, I'll pray for good luck for us. We're going to reconnoiter um, in Colorado in spring break. Mm -hmm. So, see what we could afford. <laughs> so, you're just going to be house hunting or what are you doing? Have you put the condo on the market yet? April 1st. Okay, Can we right. vote on that, Bert? <laughs> no. <laughs> I vote no. <laughs> well, like I told my parents when they were thinking about moving, like, you can't find a place to live. Maybe that's God's sign you're not supposed to move. <laughs> we'll accept that, too. So. <laughs> right. Okay, anything else? Not let's pray. We'll go down early. Dear Father, thank you for this day and the time to hear a lesson that um, is difficult to hear and read and to understand. We thank you for the time and the preparation that Timothy put into this and his presentation today. Father, we pray for safe travels for Catherine Tucker as she is uh, enjoying her family during spring break in uh, Grand Canyon. We pray for the family of Roger Painter, who is a former pastor of First Baptist Church in Austin, who is had a severe stroke and died on Wednesday. We pray for Diana Early's brother-in-law, Edwin Watkins, uh, upon complications of his cataract surgery, um, and pray for that corrective surgery uh, on 311 tomorrow. We are thankful for Patty and, and David's surgeries for cataracts as well. Pray for safe travels for Bert and Diana on spring break as they house hunt in Colorado. Um, and as they start moving that direction. Father, we thank you for our pastor, for our staff, and for our church, and help us to be your hands and feet in this part of the world. So let me pray. Amen. 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 Yeah, this is the this woman that's a pastor in Boulder now. She's a former resident. And oh, Andrew Darty. She's in Colorado. And Anne is in Denver, but Andrew Darty is in Boulder. Yeah. There you go. You can try to you can try to get a place in here one of those two churches. Yeah. Yes. So Andrew is at Pine Street Church in Boulder. It's, it used to be like Pine Street Baptist, but I just didn't call it Pine Street. I'm not quite sure the name of the answer. Calvary. Calvary. Yeah. Calvary. Yeah. 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 Yeah.